Hello! Welcome back to the Aquarius Samples introductory video series. I'm Alistair Foreman and I'm here again with Max Budendijk, the product manager for the product. Today again we'd like to show you some of the features of Aquarius Samples and how it can help you be productive and successful. Today we're going to look at how the system can reference data about biological information, habitat and biological data, and how it can be managed through a web software application like Aquarius Samples. Max, can you take us through a, an example of this type? Sure, let's get into it. I know we've, uh, we've got some of this data in here, but let's just pretend I, I completely forgot where, where it is. So let's go ask the system. Let's start with uh, observations again. And in this case, um, maybe I remember I had some habitat assessments. I don't know where they are, but what I do remember is that they uh, were about white oak. So let's go ask the system and uh, type that into our free text search right here. White oak, there we go. And we found us a whole bunch of habitat observations. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and select one of those. This one says aquatic vegetation. If I uh, click on this as, as we already used to, I'm just gonna fold those filters away. Here we can see related information about where this data is coming from, the location, the visit. So I'm gonna jump to the visit that uh, produced this habitat assessment. And now you can see within my field service, with this field visit, I can see my habitat stream assessment. So I'm gonna open this one. Here I can see a lots of details about the related fieldwork part, very similar to the sampling fieldwork we saw before. And now here's details about the actual habitat assessment, such as the aquatic vegetation, riparian vegetation, there's watershed features, in-stream features. So all my data about my habitat assessment um, is right there available. I'm gonna leave it at an overview for uh, this example for time constraints and we'll drill into all the different metadata for the next example in just a minute. What I do wanna show though is um, related to white oak. There's a lot more information in the system about this uh, called a taxonomy element or the species. I could navigate there either by opening the settings sections and within here I have my whole taxonomy which is fully configurable to the needs of your organization or I could just be lazy, select my uh, observation here right again and I can see it's linked to my taxonomy elements. I'm going to use this link to jump to the taxonomy element. So what we can find in here is really the key details about um, a taxonomy element or species such as the uh, scientific name, common name, um, when it was discovered level, different comments and another pretty cool feature is I can configure additional external identifiers. So in this case what we have is uh, an identifier that's a direct link to the uh, integrated taxonomic service, the uh, ITIS. And just by uh, entering a valid ITIS TSN right here, I'm creating a link that I can just follow and actually jump to the standard ITIS report page right from uh, within samples, which really is another cool benefit of having a cloud software that's just using a web browser. So within here, I have all the information I could possibly ever need. And uh, as I said, you could use other um, systems as backup sources or additional detail for your taxonomy elements. Okay, thanks, Max. So that was an example of a habitat survey. Uh, in a similar vein, I know that in this system we have another kind of survey, which was based on electrofishing data. Can you can you show us that? Sure. Um, let's start with uh, a fresh list of filters, and I'm going to show you a slightly different way of getting to this data, other than starting from the filters. So in this case, I might know that there was a specific field trip that was uh, for, the, for the whole purpose of, of doing electrofishing data. So I'm going to navigate to my field data section within the main menu. I'm going to open the field trips. And within here, I'm going to see a whole bunch of different field trips that produce all my existing data in some plant ones. We'll look into that, into, we'll look into that in a little bit. Right here, I can see one uh, trip about electrofishing. So I'm going to open this one. And this field trip page is going to give me a real quick overview about the different crew that went, the individual visits, meaning that the stops on the way, I can see this data is done, I can see a bit of an overview and summary of what types of data have been collected. Additionally, there could be attachments in the change history. So, but let's look into one of those visits in detail. I'm going to navigate to this location and bring up the uh, visit that has my field survey data, which I can see right here, two different passes of uh, electrofishing data. So that's, that's kind of interesting. So if I'm looking at this screen, I can see that on the left, we've got some samples that were taken. We looked at those earlier, like bottles and so on, sent to a labs. 
And we've got some field results on the right that were things that were collected in the field, measurements made directly. But this field survey in the middle is kind of interesting. Can you go into more detail on what those are? Right. Be before I do that, um, as you mentioned, there is different data types within this visit. And I think it's important to point out what ties those different those different data types together in this visit. That, that's it's the system doing that for you. You don't have to match up um, data by um, by IDs, by date times, by locations. This data is part of this visit, so you could be doing sampling field work with different timestamps, or you could be doing field surveys, field results, and even vertical profiles. All that data is um, part of this visit, and that's really a um, a concept that's built into a core sample. So it really helps if later on you're trying to and dig into different types of data and what, what, what was going on in the field at that specific time. But let's look into the field surveys a little bit. So I'm going to open up one of those um, electro fishing field survey and data types. And let's speak a little bit about what is a field survey within Aquarius samples. So it's meant for data that's really more complex than, let's say, a simple pH reading from a field meter. It's tied to a taxonomy. It's about a specific species. And it, it's really a combination of that species and additional results, observations describing that species. So it's really grouping multiple observations about one single entity, which could be um, fish you collected, uh, specific species or vegetation you're looking at. So all the data is in one place and it's related. So what could one specimen mean? Let's look at this uh, data in a bit more detail. So one specimen could either be a count of fish. Here's one example. I'm going to open this up and uh, this represents a count of bluegill and uh, even some additional information. Somebody apparently uploaded some pictures. So let's let's go follow that. I can navigate back to my uh, visit and then look at my attachments. Oh, here's a lot of pictures about the field work that was ongoing. I'm going to download this bluegill picture and just to see what's going on. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So that's really easy to get to related metadata to your field surveys, as you can see. Let's continue looking at specimens that are part of a field survey. As we said, uh, a specimen could either be a count or it could also be describing one individual specimen. Let's look at one of these, which are uh, individual specimens of green sunfish in this case. So I'm going to look at one of those and we can see here somebody describes an individual sunfish by types of anomalies, about lesions, tumors, deformities. And by the way, all of those are fully configurable to whatever your organization needs. Okay, I'm just going to navigate back to my uh, field survey right here. Now, Max, stop right there for a second. I noticed when you were looking at some of those results that the results themselves are non-numeric. They're words like yes and no or color. Um, I think that's a pretty important point. Right, exactly. So Aquarius samples can store both numeric and what we call uh, categorical or non-numeric results. So we've already seen a few examples here, as you said. Um, here's some yes-no results, could be uh, presence, absence. Or if I go back to my visit, I think we had some, yeah, right here, something like water visibility could be good, bad. So that really allows you to capture a much wider range of data than just numbers. Okay, great. So. With these field surveys, can you show us some of the other ways you can explore this data in samples? Right, totally. So let's go back to my list of observations. And uh, yeah, as, as you've mentioned, like I've stored those field surveys within samples and that's all cool, but how can I make this data accessible? How can I use it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that location that we just used for this example. And I'm gonna look into abundance, fish abundance. In this case, and let's stay with the same example that we already had. I'm going to pick the taxonomy element, which is another filter in uh, samples that will bring up all the data related to that uh, taxonomy element that you have. And I'm going to look for bluegill since that was part of our example. Here we go. That's the uh, data that we've just been looking at. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more data from one of our demo sites. I happen to know that has more of this. So, yeah, what's what can I do with this data now? And I think the, the obvious selection is just throw it into a chart. So this way I can get, uh, without without any manual work, I can get a real quick visual representation of the abundance of a specific species over time across different locations. So that really makes that data very accessible and allows you to drill into it without uh, going into spreadsheets and manually having to work with it. That's really helpful. Thanks, Max. So let's start to wrap up here for a second. Uh, if we zoom out a bit, 
uh, we'll see the field trips uh, and so on. And I, I noticed there was some ones that you showed as planned. Can we talk about the planning aspects of uh, query samples? Yeah, totally. That's another really important part. So again, this is within our field data section. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to my field uh, trips again. So we've already skipped across this a little bit. And here we've seen a lot of uh, completed trips in the past. A lot of those actually produce the data, for examples, that we've been looking at before. Here's one that's special in this case. Here's one that's planned. Let's look at the planned one. So the planned one also has uh, field visits in it. But in this case, yeah, they're planned since it's a planned trip. So let's look at what uh, makes up a plant visit. I can open that up and look into all the detailed parts. So you can see the plant visit actually looks a little bit different than the one that's already started. Since in this case, I think to me, it represents a bit of a to-do list. It shows me um, both the person setting up the monitoring program, what needs to be done, all the related comments they want to um, make to really, really hint at the, the field stuff, what they need to do. And in this case, we can see here's my planned sampling field work. In this case, there's only one sampling template that's planned. Um, a sampling template is a predefined sample, which consists of uh, the set of individual bottles and all the lab analysis, including things like holding times and whatnot. So you can predefine all of that within samples and then just use them to plan out your field work, which really speeds up the, uh, the planning part. We can see you could also plan field surveys or vertical profiles, but this example just has a couple of more field results planned. Um, in this case, uh, pH, water temp, with uh, a couple of additional information about uh, the specific device to be used, some instructions about uh, let the temperature stabilize first, whatever you want to ensure that your, your standard operating procedures in the field are being maintained. That concludes our third video in the Query Sample series. We'll be back again with another example. Until then, thanks for watching. See you later. Thanks for watching.